Welcome back to Star Wars Nerds. Good night. <laughs> this is episode number one one zero. One ten? That's correct. Wow. This That's... should be like an anniversary, right? Um I don't know what it's an anniversary for. I don't know. Why seventy five an anniversary? Because it's a increment of twenty five. It's Alright, this is an increment of ten. The first increment of ten after a hundred. This is our anniversary 110 episode. Yeah. Coming at you. I'm your host, Tim the Bim Van Autriv. Joining me as always are Josh the Tosh, which we remember means nonsense. No, it means garbage. Garbage. Nonsense. Oh. Mason. Internet famous. Hello. And Jennifer Van Autriv. <laughs> I have nothing. <laughs> Nothing rhymes with Jennifer. Hello. Hi. Hi. What are we going to talk about? Through Imperial Eyes. What is it? I thought we were going to do two tonight. It's just, if we do two, it's going to be two different episodes. Yeah. Oh, two se- totally separate episodes? Yeah. <sighs> we could just do two in one episode. Why don't we just do two in one episode? It's not going to take us long to get to the next one. Fine. All right, Jenny, since everyone has voted her fan favorite for <laughs> Synopsi, uh, that's been a long time we ran that poll. Everybody since then has talked about how you're the one that does Synopsis. Josh is the smart one, snarky one, that gives us all the info, and I'm here. So those are our <laughs> roles. Roles and response. It's a racy chart. What's a racy chart? R-A-C-I. I can't remember what it stands for right now. Roles and... That sounds like big corporate talk. It is big corporate talk. I'll think of it by the end. Is it chief something? No. I don't think I could work for a big company. You could. It's surprisingly easy. You just go to work. <laughs> but I don't think I could do that. I, can, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I work for a huge company. I mean, it's just work. You just go. And it's in a building with more people than you're used to. Yeah, but don't you feel unimportant? No. I don't care if I'm important. But I do care. I get paid exorbitant amounts of money to go to work. That's all I care about. Hmm. Wow. Wish I was motivated by the same things as you. Roles and responsibilities matrix. But what does it stand for? Uh, Responsible, accountable, consulted, informed. So you put in all the roles and the various responsibilities and then you, you classify whether that role is responsible, accountable, consulted, or informed about that responsibility. So that it creates clear line of sight as to who's responsible for what. Oh, good lord. It's it's very helpful. I love racy charts. Do you? Yeah, because then I can always show people, this is your job. I'm not responsible for How often for do you make a racy chart? There's <laughs> racy charts for every position in our company. I think I need to make a racy chart. You should. Work. So it's not based on like... Oh, we've got this new project coming up, and you have to like constantly make a new one. We have so we have teams. We have dedicated processes for everything. So if a new project comes up, you follow the process. And so the you have process like says, one racy chart. Each section will have a racy chart for all their people. So that the same person is always that kind of sucks. No, the same it's person the role always, that role. Yeah, but if you you're always a have the same system engineer. You're responsible for this, this, that, this. Burp, burp, burp. If you're a team lead, you're responsible. Burp, 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 burp. Yeah. You're informed about. Blah, 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 blah. And then huh. you you get to pick what job you are, and maybe in a different organization, you can work on one thing here, and then in a couple of years go move on something else. And it's like a totally different company, other than it's the same company. Hmm. Sounds exciting. Completely different things. I think my idea about corporate America has changed. It should. It's it's different, but it's not bad. And just remember, no matter who's the boss, they're not looking out for you. As much as you want to believe it, the man doesn't care about you. I've heard that from you a lot lately. I just just the facts. So do you have to you just have to look out for yourself? You have to be wary and cognizant that you are your own shepherd. Hmm. Deep. Or get lots of mentors that you trust. Words of wisdom from Josh the Tosh, internet there famous Mason. We are here to talk about Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> Unless you guys want to talk about corporate America some more. Well, there was something I was going to announce. I forget what it was. 
Dang it. There's nothing what was to it about? Those. I don't know. It was important, though. Are we going to get shirts finally? <sighs> I don't have time for that. We it th- wouldn't take you very much time. <sighs> I you're know. not sewing so the shirts so together. I'm busy at work. And you're not <sighs> busy at home at all. I would argue that. You're, you're, you think you're mentally challenged and stressed at home, but you're not busy. He's not mentally challenged. He's or challenged about that room. <laughs> I am. I am mentally stressed and challenged at home. You, you show your stress. I do. You, you have more gray hair now. <laughs> I have what? You have more oh, gray hair. Oh, are you going to announce so that you cut hair. your bun off? <laughs> no, that was not what I was going to talk about. <laughs> That's the best news of the century. <laughs> my wife made me trim my beard. I didn't make you. I just no, you heavily you, suggested that you, you do it. You told me over and over, and I t- kept telling you, the more you suggested I get rid of it, the longer I was going to keep it. And then yeah. I cut it off anyway. It was great. It wasn't even the beard that much that bothered me. It was your hair. I told you you could keep the beard and just yeah, trim you just, it up. you just wouldn't kiss me anymore. Yeah, it looked like I was kissing <laughs> a homeless <laughs> person. <laughs> And felt like it. I was trying to hold out with the man bun until we did our canoe trip. Yeah, just kept getting delayed. <laughs> so then, you could escape into the woods and just live there forever. Yeah. <laughs> I'd fit in. Scare off all the animals <laughs> with his samurai <laughs> skills. I was excited about I it. I am the Bushido. <laughs> <laughs> you should not come in my tent. Oh, man. <laughs> Get one of those clip-ons for your canoe trip. Where are we going for the canoe trip? The Wolf River in Wisconsin. Wolf River, Wisconsin. If you guys are there, the weekend of June, July, July 14th is when we're going. Yeah, you may run into us. You'll float into us. We'll be on the water. How many people are going now? I don't know. We do a yearly canoe trip. Where They've, they've literally heard about this twice already. Don't you remember well, last year? Oh, I guess there well, could be new people. <laughs> Did we tell them about the canoe trip? Yeah, don't you remember we were talking about getting eaten by bears in our Hobbit adventure? Oh, we were scared. Yeah, I remember. You were scared. (laughs) Jenny was scared. scared. Josh was scared. I had my pocket knife, so. (laughs) Yeah, you guys, well, you were going into like a new place. We go to a new place every time. Yeah, this place seemed scarier. We're not going to a new place this time, are we? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were doing this new. Oh, okay. We've never done the wolf. All right, well, I'm excited. What state is it now? Yeah, I have my pocket knife right now. It's in Michigan. It's in Wisconsin. What? I thought we were going to Grand, like around Grand Rapids. <laughs> no, when did we're not. this change? Is it because I don't ago. follow the? It changed a year ago. I don't follow the chats anymore. We did the pine. Maybe River you're going on a different ago. canoe trip. No, we're not. Tim. We're not. I don't know. Maybe Tim trip. is going with someone else, and he got it mixed. I don't know. Up. Maybe. I don't know. The canoe trip is the highlight of my whole year. We were supposed to be in the water this upcoming this past, weekend. I thought it was this past weekend. It might have been even. Yeah, yeah it was. <sighs> Is Kendon going this year? I don't think so. He, I didn't. Well, I didn't so, tell him what dates it was after we. So changed. the original date, yeah, he was a no, but this new oh, one. Oh, probably not because they're moving to take care of his sister. Yeah, they're temporarily moving to Delaware. For he pretty much just lives, he lives a transient lifestyle well, anyway. But my sister's actually moving there with him this time for three to six months. Yeah. Yeah. Did you install iOS 11 yet, Josh? <sighs> no. I don't know that I have a device that can actually install it. Oh. All my iPads are like twos and threes. <clears throat> I just installed it. Yeah. It's right here, updating my iCloud settings. That's too bad. Okay, we're going to talk about Star Wars Rebels. Oh. Two episodes, I guess. We are not following the correct racy chart here. I believe that is my job to bring <laughs> us back on task. Through Imperial Eyes, and then, then the next one is called Secret Cargo. All right, which Tim, one? do you want to give the... You're no, going to give... You're doing it. <laughs> okay, so through Imperial Eyes, it starts off really cool. Um, you, we know now that... We've known for a while that Callus is Fulcrum. And so this episode starts on an Imperial ship and you don't really know... It's like you're seeing... First person. Like, yeah, whatever. Um, you're seeing what Callus sees... As he's walking through the ship, but you don't even know who that it's him at the beginning. Um, so the, you're on a he's on an imperial ship, and they they capture, um, they intercept some little shuttle a, yeah, or ship or something, or something, and 
It's Ezra inside. In AP5 and Chopper? Yeah. And so Fulcrum, they, you know, say, oh, that's the... Oh, do they know right away that it's him besides Fulcrum? I mean, besides Callus? Callus knows. No yeah. one else knows. Okay, so I don't know what their pretense was for capturing him. Like They, they said that he stole the shuttle and blasted out of Lothal. So he stole it on Lothal and oh, blasted okay. out of the spaceport. And so they intercepted him. So they were going to take him um, captive or whatever. So Callus just pretends like he doesn't know him and he wants to talk to him privately. So he goes into this, like... Um, Holding cell. Holding cell with him. And it's like, what's going on? What are you guys doing here? You're going to expose me. She is not actually verbatim reading the teleplay, just so everyone knows. I'm not. How would anyone know? I know. <laughs> You've almost even got the stage direction in. So, uh, you made me lose my no, I've derailed you. Okay, so anyway, Callus is like, Ezra, what are you doing here? Mm. You're going to expose me. This was so careless of you, blah, blah, blah. And Ezra is like, um, tells him that he, th- that they think that his last um, they think transmission made. was found out. Right. So they think Fulcrum was in danger. I keep calling him Fulcrum. Like, I never Callus, called him that yeah. before. Callus. They think Callus is in danger. So Ezra got himself captured so that he could rescue Callus and bring him back to the rebels. So then Callus comes up with the plan. He leaves Ezra in the cell. Um, I don't remember all the different officers' names. Lieutenant um, List is the other officer on that ship. And he's the young guy? Mm-hmm. And who's the woman? That's Governor Price. So Governor Price is well, in this first, episode. Yeah, you they, they transition from Lieutenant List's ship to Thrawn's ship because Thrawn he's, comes aboard. Thrawn requests List and Callus to come to his ship. Oh, come to his ship. So, so they grab Thrawn Ezra, has, they grab the droids, yeah, and they head over to Thrawn's ship. And there's um, the, who's the new character that has some history? Colonel. Well, so there's Colonel Yularen, yeah. who is an ISB agent. And he's has he knows Callus from yeah, he, he was they're in the same organization and he trained yeah. Callus at the the academy and he remembers him from the academy and what a good student he was and everything yep. and they respect each other so you, we find out that Thrawn has hired the colonel to find his rebel spy. Yep. And Callus has to figure out how to get out of this pickle they're in a pickle so like there's i don't know what they're called but they're they look like their identification they look like little remotes yeah well they look like pens yeah and they have them like in their pockets but they call them identification cylinders so he <laughs> sw- callus switches <laughs> cylinders with list yeah callus switches his with the list guy and list is like a younger well, so you're missing out on, like, you've got that entire subplot where, where Thrawn is looking for the mole. Yeah. Callus is simultaneously trying to convince List that Price is the mole. Yes, the woman yeah, officer. Yeah, Governor Price. He's, he's, Callus is manipulating List, the young and um, naive kind of well, officer. So do you into, remember what he's from? Was he from Lothal? I don't remember. Well, do you remember when Leia brought the Hammerhead cruisers? Yeah. When so she he was... was the lieutenant that was in charge of that. And so uh-huh. he's very sheepish and like, he he wants to redeem himself. Oh, okay. So Callus starts planning this idea into List's head that, that it's, gov- what, not Governor, but it's... Yeah, um, it's Governor Price. Oh, Governor Price, yeah. And so he starts to kind of... Liz starts to kind of watch her and starts to get suspicious. And meanwhile, Callus has switched their identification around and he uses Liz's identification to um, release Ezra so that Ezra can get out. And then um, Ezra, I think it, that's when 
I don't know, the ghost comes to get Ezra and Ezra's running out. And well, then... before that, so as part of the... <laughs> I never There's another talk. little plot where Thrawn reveals to um, a select group of people that in, invo- uh, includes Admiral Constantine, List, and Callus, And kind of tells them, hey, I... I have figured out that the rebels are on one of these. I'm oh, gonna say he has like these planets. Um, holograms or right. whatever of all of a different of like a certain group of yeah. planets, and he he's narrowed down their base. And he's doing this on purpose because he is Thrawn thinks that the the spy is in these groups of people. So there was a another group of three <clears throat> officers that had just left Thrawn's office before Callus and List got there, and so that group. He also gave a similar message, but probably with different stuff. So mm-hmm. he's trying to out his mole, basically. And that's that's why he was in that meeting in the first place. And where he got fed that info about the reduced list of planets. And so because of that, Callus is like, we got to go delete this planet. We got to delete mm-hmm. your base or they're going to find it. And then oh, so Ezra uses- also needed codes because... They had codes to have Kanan and um, Rex come on an Imperial shuttle, but it was only for the cruiser that Callus was on. It wasn't for Thrawn's ship. Do you remember what Thrawn's ship's name was? This is a very famous ship name. No, I don't remember. It's the Chimera. Oh, okay. If you if you read the the Hand of Thrawn series, or not, what is it called? It's not Hand of Thrawn. Everybody just calls it the Thrawn Trilogy. Yeah, huh. that's his Star Destroyer. It's really famous. But so anyways, they needed so, codes as well. Okay, so once, I don't know where Thrawn goes, but... Well, th- so Thrawn he leaves his goes office. to see the prisoner Okay. that got brought because they suspect... But he was already at loose. Yeah. By so there's point. these parallel paths going on. So then Callus goes to the office. Ron's office with Ezra. And pro- I, I don't remember, Chopper probably. Chopper and AP5. And they are trying to get the codes and uh, delete the, delete planet, the planets. Yeah. And there's those huge um, droids, like a, that. It, those like attack droids that come yeah. out. And so... So Thrawn was using them to train, but Callus reprograms them because... Thrawn shows up while they're in the office, but and they Callus, need to get out. But Callus and, I don't know, somehow he doesn't actually see Callus, and uh, Callus... So I, I think that he sees him, but Callus, like, they, it's played off like Callus gets away, but I think Thrawn actually sees him. Yeah, so I don't know. But, I mean, it, you don't see him see him. If he right. sees him, yeah. So, yeah, they program him to go after Thrawn, Thrawn. so he's busy... Fighting off these droids. There's like three of them, I think. Mm-hmm. And then, so Ezra's like got the codes, I think. They got the codes. They got everything they, they wanted. They transmitted them to uh, Kanan and Rex. So then Ezra's trying to make a run for it with AP5 Chopper. And, Chopper. and they're like in this hangar. And that's when Government Price. Government, government Price. <laughs> Governor Price shows up, <laughs> and she's like near the rebels right when List walks in. So right. he thinks it's true. She's with the rebels. She's a spy. So he like points his gun gun at her and tells her to stop. And Callus tackles. Yeah, him. and then Callus turns on him and tackles him and switches the puts the back. whole thing on List. So then List is like taken into custody but then who is Thrawn talking to in the end Ezra and everybody get away right Thrawn you find out that Thrawn knows it's Kanan or I mean Callus right he knows because he saw him in the office and he always suspected it was him he was talking to Yularen at the end oh yeah the colonel guy right so he I kind of felt bad like the list guy and got so caught. here's the thing Callus could have left Oh, yeah. But so he was convinced. He had a conversation. Ezra was, like, trying to save him and everything. And Callus was like, you know what? We're good now. They don't know it's me. Like, I'm going to stay. Go. I'm, I'm better here. here. Yeah, right. I'm, it's be- I'm better off here. So then he stays. Ezra goes. 
And then they take List away, and then you find out that right. so he's Callus not thinks safe he's in the clear, all. but yeah, and Thrawn knows the whole time. Yep. Well, not maybe not the whole time, but I think he suspected the whole time. Thrawn now knows confirmed. now for sure, and now the Colonel knows, and the Colonel was like very surprised. Right. But Thrawn knows List is a a goof. Like he could yeah. never figure this out. Yeah. There, yeah. That part was pretty obvious. So there you go. Yeah, Through so when I do a synopsis, it really means you I start to talk. The whole story. I didn't read anything. <laughs> I start to talk, I get midway through a sentence, and Josh finishes it for me. You guys are a good team. You, you guys are a good team. You. I'm like, yeah, that one thing, that what's that name? <laughs> that one girl. I was really surprised when Callus stayed. I thought he would take that opportunity to get out. Yeah, it was... Uh... Well... It was a huge risk. It was. I don't think he's... And it, it showed Well, he's the, obviously overconfident, and... I don't I, think I, he's I don't, overconfident. Yeah, I don't think he's overconfident. I think he... He maybe, overestimates how sneaky he is. Uh, he was pretty sneaky. If it was any... Well, then he's underestimating besides, Thrawn. Yes, that is true. But I don't think he's ready to, like, give up his whole life for the I rebels. Th- I, think yeah. I think it's the opposite. Help him. Yeah, I think he's already decided that his fate is sealed. Right, it's over. Really? And he'd rather do the best he could do to give them. No, the I, d- I don't he think he actually thought. I don't think he thinks he's oh, in do. danger. I think it was complete. I think he sacrifice. No, yeah, I do too. Absol- I think absolutely he, complete sacrifice. No, I think it's been. I think what brought him over to the rebels was like a, um, what's it called? What? Tacos. Uh, no. <laughs> got really good uh, chimichangas. I had a chimichanga. A tonight. conflict with his yeah. conscience. I don't know the phrase I was looking for, but he knew a he was wrong. Crisis of conscience? Maybe, yeah, that. He knew what, he, what the Empire was doing was wrong, so he wanted to help. I just, I don't think he's completely ready to be a rebel and be running and have that life. He's still, I think he's still comfortable where he is i don't think he's comfortable at all i don't either um, i think he is. I think maybe that was, you guys don't know callus I would, like i, I know callus <laughs> so do you remember the first scene at all where he's washing his hands and the alarm's going off well, well not only that but like when he looks in the mirror like he looked like a super stressed out like he like, like tim <laughs> yeah it looked like <laughs> him uh, in imperial agent form. i thought the beginning of the episode hair. was so cool though like yeah it was great i love that it was very cinematic but, but you like, you you totally glossed over the point of it um could you imagine living his life how stressed out you would be constantly worrying about getting caught yeah it's basically every second of every day even when you're sleeping you go to sleep and you think you might be dead or tortured by the time you wake up. I don't think he's comfortable at all. That's why they had the first scene. Yeah, I just think he... You're just going to choose to ignore the first scene? No, I just... I think that you saw he was alone in the first scene, so he wasn't putting on a face or anything He was for anybody. Alone. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think... You just saw him as him, but I don't. I still stand by. Like I don't wake up and look in the mirror like a disheveled mess and just a stress ball. Uh, (laughs) Maybe not. I may be a disheveled mess, but I'm not because I'm a stress ball. He was. He was. You could tell. And the whole. Why would they put it in the episode unless that's the point they're trying to convey? Did you really think they needed to show us a day in the life that? People have sinks on Imperial Star Cruisers. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think he was. I don't think he thought he was caught. Oh, I, it didn't matter if he thought. So he was if caught. he actually, I mean, if he actually thought he was, it was over. I I just don't know why he would stay anyway. Because like, he thought he could do more good there. Yeah, he was. He, was did some pretty quick goat thinking and got it all Are worked goats out. Quick thinkers. Uh, that's from the Adam Sandler, uh, whatever the comedy CD that he put out. 
<laughs> I don't know that. Back in 1990? It was a long time ago. <laughs> I didn't know he had a comedy CD. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was, was a comedian. Long I ago. know he's he said, a comedian. I he did some quick gold think in there, eh? <laughs> Something like that. Uh-oh. I can play it. It's, Is it in a cardboard box in yeah. my parents' house? <laughs> it might be. This one I can actually confirm is real. Hold on, let me look it up for you. I can tell you what it's called. I owned it. So yeah. what did you? So I I don't know that there's a whole lot to talk more to. Uh, it, the the episode's pretty. pretty this, tight, this is one of my favorite episodes. I think. Yeah. I like how Ezra how they came to save him. Yeah, it's kind of the. The only oh, I was gonna say the only thing I kind of felt bad for List because he's so naive almost and just like incompetent. Don't feel bad. He's an I imperial felt, officer. I felt bad for him. Don't feel bad. And then like immediately I found out like oh he's not really in trouble. No, Thrawn knows it's not him because he's too dumb. Right. Oh man, I have so many memories. I just looked up the playlist or the the list of it's called what the. Each word happened to me. What the heck happened to me? It's Judy Album by Adam Sandler. The Excited Southerner Orders a Meal. <laughs> Ode to My Car. The Goat. That's where the quick goat thinking one comes in. <laughs> the Hanukkah song. Naturally. The Excited Southerner Gets Pulled Over. The Hypnotist. Steve Polychronopoulos. The Excited Southerner at a job interview. Did, what year did that come out? Uh, 1997, I think. Hold on. Mm. Yeah, 97. Old. Old. No, 96. One, over 20 years ago. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, man, I really want to listen to this now. All right. There's, you, there's like songs and then there'll be skits. Yeah, but they're all dirty. They're filthy. So we can't listen to it right now. No. So this was a really good episode. Um you want to give us a number rating? You mean this episode that we're nine. doing? We're performing? I can all give it a nine and a half. I already half. put mine in on the spreadsheet, so Tim. That, I'm going nines. That was a really good episode. I changed it to nine and a half because it's a mark. Uh, I put 9.73. What? It was by far and away one of the best episodes <laughs> of Rebels. <laughs> oh my gosh. They have the comedy album on Apple Music. It's the, it's the full story of Callus, the liber or the uh, redemption of Callus. Wait, what did you say? They have what? He's that saying that it's album. on. It. It's on Apple Music, so he can stream it because he oh. pays for streaming. Oh my gosh! So, have you ever seen the show The Americans? No. Oh, it's really good. It's like they're spies, set right? In the eighties, they're Russians, KGB. Yeah, I've, so I've heard of it, but I've not watched. It's it. a really good show, but. Um, that would be how Callus would feel, I would assume. I don't know. They're in a lot of sticky situations, fighting those dumb Americans. Yeah, filthy Americans. <laughs> Have you watched House of Cards? <sighs> the new season? Just in general. Hey. Tim's been binge watching it. He started it like two days ago. Yeah, so Megan and I have watched season every two. season when they come out, and so we're... We're only one episode into this season so far. I'm not sure how I feel about it. There are like no likable characters. Uh, I don't know how far you were into the show. So. I'm in season two. The reporter was kind of likable, and now she's don't, gone. Don't say that. You're yeah, spoiling the people. Well, I mean, they're not watching, listening to hear about House it, of Cards spoilers in here. It was 2012, I guess, when that. 2012. It was, it 2013, came out? actually. I didn't know it was that old. So I don't think the objective is to have likable characters. I know, but a Usually lot of, you have a lot of TV have shows don't have root for. they don't have likable characters anymore. A lot of everybody's like dark. But I I guess I would I don't like Claire that much either. I think that she's really strange. They're she's nothing like my wife. They're pointing they're having you mentally process the idea of that nobody's good except for me. I know I'm good. Are you? Aren't you? I know that I'm good, but could I not be good to somebody else? I've never known you to be bad to anybody. I don't know. Other about. than when you get in a big group of people and you start throwing your whatever it is you do around and then all the wives hate you. Yeah, that's too bad. Wives don't like me either. Especially my own. 
That's not true. She does like me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think so. She acts like it. So, Especially since I got rid of that. So yes. Anyway. Whenever you're caught up in House of Cards, you can... Uh, I'm not too... I mean, it's okay. I can listen I think to a it lot of background music, but... A lot of that show is different watching it historically than in the present. Because there is a lot of stuff that happened on that show that happened in reality like months later it was very uh prescient and now you see it and it's like oh they wrote that because so and so did this oh no i didn't think that i don't follow politics at all so i have no oh, idea okay. what's happening <sighs> right. i do so um, there's a lot of stuff like that where you're going to if you're if you're in the know on politics at all you're going to be like that's exactly like what just happened in real life but the reality is, is it came out before that happened in real life. It's, so House of Cards is dictating real life. It's crazy. It is like every single season they do something and you're like, there's no way that, you know, that's ridiculous. And then it happens. Huh. Do you watch The Leftovers? No. I just finished the last, last ever episode of that. Yep. It's too bad. I've, I've, it, I'll watch it someday. It's, but. it's, it's a strange show. Well, it's, it's really got uh, Damon Lindelof in charge of it. It's really good, though. Anyways. So we're going to talk about, about another episode, shows. or we're going to just do feedback? And be oh, done. Um, we are 31 minutes in. We can talk about in. another episode. <clears throat> Secret you got to give a much quicker synopsis for this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, should I down. cut my part out, or should just you do, cut you your just part talk. out? I'm not going to talk. <laughs> That's a challenge. I'm just okay. not going to talk. Um, Secret Cargo is the next episode. The crew of the Ghost is on a mission. They're supposed to... Um, I think they're providing fuel for another rebel ship. It's like top secret. They have, they're have they carrying something that's top secret. And secret Cargo, maybe? That's the name of the episode. <laughs> yes. You you didn't even last like, and that was like not even pertinent. It wasn't even twenty seconds. It was perfect though. You were just so clueless. Like they were carrying something that was just they didn't want people to know about what they were carrying. It was a secret. <laughs> so, uh, and um, Kanan is gone. Everybody's there. But, well, Sabine is gone for good now. And Kanan, we I don't even know where Kanan is, but Hera, Zeb, Chopper, Ezra, they're all there. So they go to fuel up this secret cargo ship. And um, on their way, they come across a probe droid. And they try to sneak past it, but it sees them and starts, they start firing at them and they think that it transmits their location before they destroy the probe droid, which it does. And <clears throat> so they get to the rebel ship and let them know there's like, a, I don't know, a handful of rebel pilots on this ship. And they let them know about the droid. So they're like, come on, let's refuel and get out of here. They're going to send the Empire to us. They've been looking for us. So... They only have like five seconds, and then the Empire's there. Um, that one of the pilots is a female, I have no idea what her name is, but she like has a big attitude towards the ghost crew, and she like totally lays into Ezra and talks about how they some of their stunts have hurt them, and um, they're reckless, and and she's just like letting him have it. And then the Empire gets there and starts blasting at their ship. And she gets knocked out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so the rest of the pilots that are on the ship need to go and um, shoot at the Empire <laughs> ships. I'm, go I'm shoot not, at the Empire. <laughs> I'm not good with fighting scenes. So. They're like, we're down to pilot. What are we going to do? And then Ezra's like, I can fly. So they let Ezra fly this um, pilot chick who got knocked out while yelling at Ezra about how dumb he was. 
he gets to fly in her ship. What kind of ship was it? I have no idea. A wing, X wing, B wing, Z wing. Well, you're close. D wing. There's Y wing. Yeah, there's one sitting right there. Y wings. So uh, they go, and they're, I think, two Empire ships, Imperial ships show up, right? And then they, wasn't it two big ones? Two big ones. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I'm know not it's talking, one. remember? Uh-huh. Uh, so they're in this battle with the Empire. Almost all of this these group of pilots are taken out besides Ezra and their leader, um, I'm not good with the fighting. I don't know what happens with the fighting. Those two live. The I others don't know don't. what happens with the fighting. <laughs> Those two live. The others don't. You find out the secret cargo is um, Mon Mothma. And she, the reason that she's in hiding is because at the beginning of the episode, which I completely didn't tell you, it's a big secret. <laughs> If you haven't watched the episode, she gave um, a message to the Senate um, about how Palpatine was evil, basically, and all of their problems were because of him and how they needed to rise up against the Empire together. So she's been in hiding, and um, she comes out of her secret hiding spot on the ship, and she helps Hera... um, get the ship back running and they try to make their escape and then Mon Mothma delivers a message to all the rebel ships all the rebel cells all the rebel cells and asks them to come together to work together against the empire and so then you see all of these rebel ships like just Whatever you call it, when they just pop into space. They leave hyperspace. Yeah. They they just appear in front of you. So there's all these ships now. So the Alliance, that's like, that's the real, I guess, beginning of a formalized rebel alliance with... A rebel military, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, what did I miss? Um, you didn't talk at all about the squadron. And the significance of the squadron. I don't know the significance of the squadron. Uh, they're called Gold Squadron. Well, I don't know what that significance is. So they were... Gold Squadron was in Rogue One. Gold Squadron is also the Y-Wing squadron that assaults the first Death Star. And Gold Leader was in the show. Do you remember what, what his show? name is, Tim? Um... No. It's either Pops or... <clears throat> What's the other guy's team? I think it's Pops, though. I don't think it is Pops. Then Pops is the red leader. Pops is one of the two leaders. Um, so that... Oh, I, stay, I forgot to say, they escaped with Mon Mothma to Dantooine. That's where she gave her message from. They're on Dantooine. Yeah, do you know the, the significance of Dantooine? <clears throat> yeah, it rhymes with Tantooine. No. <laughs> Tantooine. <laughs> it's the place that Leia said the rebel base was. And everyone in throughout history of Star Wars is like, was there ever really a Dantooine base? They all everyone just thought that Leia was lying. It was Vander. John Vander. But what was his nickname? All of them had call signs. Real call signs. The gold leader. No, he had a call sign. There was a card in the CCG for it. And it wasn't gold leader. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> everyone was always like, well, was she just lying or was there really a base on Dantooine? And there really was a base. Mm. And this is that base. And the, one of the ships they were running away from was the TIE Defender. Yeah, that's a brand new The tie, prototype ship that Thrawn was working fighter. on. fighter. Dutch. Dutch, that's what it was. Um, the TIE Defender is the TIE Fighter with shields. It has shields, yeah. And, and it has a hyperdrive too, mm. which is crazy for a Tie Fighter. Most Tie defend Tie most Tie defenders most Tie fighters don't have shields, nor do they have a hyperdrive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. I think uh, the shields are why it's called Defender. 
Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? That's obviously that's you, like the difference. You know the first appearance of the Tide Fender? Um, this episode? No. Was it the Tide Fighter versus X Wing video game? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's an old DOS and Windows ninety five and Windows ninety eight game. So I, where is um Kanan? In this episode? It never says anything. I don't about think they him. ever say. Doesn't matter. He's off training or something. She was really hung up on the fact that Kanan was missing. Yeah. No, I just uh, I mean I just thought uh, I missed when where we were he watching was. This, she was like, "Where's, Where's Kanan? Kanan? Where's Kanan? I don't I don't understand where Kanan is." <laughs> she said it like <laughs> Where's FPJ? Seven at? times. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I was missing something. Like I didn't hear like some big plot like he's doing some important thing and it's a secret and they're going to bring think it up later. I don't think it's relevant. Okay. I don't remember it being relevant in any of the future episodes. I could be wrong. <clears throat> I haven't watched... So I haven't watched this episode and the preceding... No, not preceding. The following. Yeah, the following one. There's a word that ends in eating, though. Uh, Post-seeding. Grammatically or uh, <laughs> linguistically constructed properly. Sex Anyways, the, I haven't watched them in a long time, so I don't remember. But I did watch through the Imperial Eyes recently. This one it was good. It wasn't as good as through Imperial Eyes. It had lots of good action. Yeah, I so the I space like, battle was really cool. And I don't even watch those. They flew parts. through a nebula. I don't watch blew those up parts. A, don't you, you didn't like the part where they blew up the Star Destroyer and like the nebula started eating it apart? I don't think I saw that part. Yeah, was, I just don't know. Cool. I can't follow the fighting. I'm like, who's doing what? It's just a big blur. So I just don't even watch that part. What you should do is you should get Tim to get some of the X-Wing miniatures. And then and have him reenact, reenact it for me. Tabletop style, <laughs> that, real time. Well, that'll be fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> then I can follow it. And I can have him do it slower in case I get confused. Right. See, the tie defender <laughs> does a talon roll at this point. Oh, my Lanta. You've been awful quiet, Tim. Yeah, I'm really tired. I didn't get much <laughs> sleep last night. So. I don't know that there's a whole lot more to say other than rating. Six. You only thought it was a six? I didn't care about this episode, like, at all. I gave it a 7.5. It was it was only for the action. Like, the story was okay, but, like. I thought it was, I was, like, the opposite. I gave it a 7.25 because it was the beginning of the Rebel Alliance and it had Mon Mothma in it. Yeah, it, and was it seemed like really significant. Right. But that um, doesn't mean it's a good episode of television. Right. Yeah, I like the space battles, but, but it wasn't that's about just like all there is that I. Um, Hondo like. playing around. Oh, it's, yeah. way like it's, it's, Hondo. it's way better than a Hondo episode. <laughs> yeah. There's no dispute. All right, let's do a couple letters. A couple? Yes. We're not going to do all the letters. We've had good feedback. Yeah, we've had a ton of feedback, and it came in over a week. Oh, yeah. One calendar standard week. <laughs> all right. Easy now. Uh, I don't hmm. remember which one. I do. It's Jace. Is that the first one? Yeah, but they're in the wrong order because of the reply order. What about Randall? Wasn't Randall? Um, oh, I guess no, Jace was in read. May. Yeah, May 30th was when we started. So Jace uh, sent in one called, My first letter, pretty long, sorry. I can assure you, Jace, this is short in comparison to some of the emails <laughs> that we've gotten. He says, greetings to all at the SWNU headquarters. That's where we are, guys. Yeah. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for a long time now. And now I have finally taken the time to sit down and write you guys a letter. Thank you. Uh, I kind of found you guys on accident. We get that, we get that a lot. Uh, when I looked up Star Wars on Spotify. But let me say that it has been so much fun listening to you guys. I've been a fan of Star Wars ever since I was a little kid. First time that I really remember me getting really serious about Star Wars was when me and my brother were taken to Target. And we both bought these little toys called Galactic Heroes. Ever since then, I started learning about Star Wars and have read a lot of the old comics and books from before the Disney acquisition. When Disney did buy the Star Wars franchise, I was just as confused on what was canon and what was not. 
when I started listening to you guys, I started to really understand again. Uh, that's what we're here for. It's our purpose. We're an education podcast. Uh, my first episode that I listened to was the Lost Stars episode. That's a good one to start on. It's probably one of our better episodes. Uh, let me just say it was awesome. I had loved reading the book, and then you guys have really made my eyes open to the new Star Wars universe. I started reading Thrawn yesterday, and let me just say it's awesome. Do you think you will ever do an episode on Thrawn or any of the other new books? Absolutely. Thrawn will be soon. Uh, there are also a few things that I wanted to mention real quick. First is congratulations about the baby. That's super awesome. You should give him a Star Wars name. Thank you very much, Chase. It's we're, not a baby we're yet. We're very excited. Uh, what's it technically called? It's a fetus. It's a fetus, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be a baby. Yeah, but for right now, it's a fetus. All right. So from now on, everyone has to refer to it as a fetus. I think that they should. It's... <laughs> Biologically correct. <laughs> Biologically accurate. Just like in your, your, what was it? Post, post termically. I don't remember. I don't remember what you said. Um, ba -ba. In the, post, post seeding. In the Empire Strikes Back episode, Tim and Josh were arguing about whether the famous song in the movie was called The Imperial March or if it was called Darth Vader's theme song. Well, I feel that they might have solved this problem with the new Imperial Suite in Rogue One. I think that the Imperial March is now only Darth Vader's theme, and the Imperial Suite is the theme of the Empire. One more thing, in the early Darth Vader comics, there was a General Tagi. I think that his name is just pronounced like Tag, like Price Tag. At least that's how the Lucasfilms story group's Pablo Hidalgo said it. Thanks so much for all the fun and all the Star Wars. You guys are te best. Jace Morris, you're a new nerd. It is Tag, but we say Tagi on purpose. Do we? Because I didn't know how to pronounce it, and I didn't when I heard it was you used to say tag, tag, yeah, and I said tagi, and I guess it's tag. I'll say tag. If, if Pablo says it's tag, I'll say it's tag. I like tagi better. Did we read Shane eighty one two hundred eighty six? Did I don't we read know. his email? We. That's from May seventeenth. Yeah, we definitely did. We did. Yeah. Okay. Was um, it another one where they talked about how great you are? Is that why you probably, wanted to make sure we read it? No, I just There's didn't. this one email I had starred no. from <laughs> roughly two months ago. No, he was another brand new <laughs> listener, and it was just on my list, like the one right before the one you just read, and I don't remember you reading it. Jace sent in some artwork. Did he ever reply back to you on yeah. if you could post it? Did yeah. you post him? No, I totally forgot. He replied back and said yes. Cool. He sent us some artwork. Josh is going to post it on Facebook so you can That's see good. his art. Yeah, it is really good. Star All his pictures show. are upside down, though, so I'll have to turn them first. Yeah, please. Uh, We already did that one. How about Tony? This one's... Did you do Joel? What? I don't know. Like, I think <laughs> what I see is completely different. Yeah, than... just... I don't want to hear. Uh, This one's from Tony. Subject, Big Reveal. Congratulations, Tim and Jen. Very exciting news. Do you say when you're due, or did I miss that? Um, I am due December 5th, but I think it will be before December. I think it'll be November. <laughs> She's got an intuition. Mm -hmm. She makes big babies, and they're ready to come out. They get ripe fast. Uh, a couple of name suggestions from the Star Wars universe. This is what we asked for. Mm -hmm. Bodhi. How do you spell that? B O D H I. From Rogue One. Mm. Saw. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no comment. Uh, he says, didn't think so. Lol. <laughs> you should have seen that head shrug or that, that head shake. Kylo, probably overdone by now. Probably a lot. Uh, or you can do the route my parents went. I'm named after both my grandfather's dad's dad is my first name and mother's dad is my middle name. Either way, congratulations what and can't our... wait for the next podcast. What would it be then? Oh, I'm on board. Lenny Mark. Mar Marvin Leonard. No. Yes. Mother's mother's dad is my middle name. Oh. It'd be, I'm the mother. It'd be my dad and it'd be your dad. So dad's be... dad is my first name. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
So it'd be Mark Leonard. No, no, no. Dad's dad. You're yeah. the dad. After the dad. grandfathers. His dad's dad. It's after the grandfathers. <laughs> oh my gosh. How is this you so would... hard? <laughs> you were talking about the baby's you name. You are the first dad. The baby's dad the, is the one with you. the apostrophe S. No, no, no. no. Yes. His dad's. No. He's, his He's grandpa. not talking about that. Yes, he yes, is. Yes, he is. You are the dad with the apostrophe S. You're, right. Your so, father is the second dad. So the, His name would be selected. So no. he, he no, no, had no, no, his no. two grandfather's no. names. His grandpa, his grandpa Mark and his grandpa Leonard. Not his great grandpa <laughs> and great grandpa. <laughs> He's named after both his grandfathers. Yes. His grandfathers. <laughs> That's what we're saying. <laughs> Your son's grandfather <laughs> will be your dad. <laughs> All right. I may drink a few too many kombuchas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you understand now? Yeah, I get it. It's Shut not... up. I hate both of you. I've never gone around and around so many times with something like this. So the baby's name would be Mark Leonard. Nope. <laughs> Old man Lenny. <laughs> What's? Old man Len. Why can't I think of your grandpa's? name your mom's dad's name it's ronald ronald so it'd be marvin ronald i like that <laughs> Marvin. Ronald. i don't know what's worse marvin ronald or mark leonard they're both bad mm. either way congratulations and can't wait for the next podcast i hope that was entertaining for everybody oh my God. <laughs> at least you're here good <laughs> lord so if you guys didn't understand, <laughs> Tim couldn't understand that Shut up. the email was Shut talking up. about Shut up. the child's grandpa, not the uh, father's yeah. grandpa. <laughs> Just wanted to clear that up in case you didn't get what was going on. Okay. What's the next email? Another Jace email. Yeah. He, he, he rapid fired some emails. Yeah, off. that he did. In two days, he sent four emails. Hey, nerds. I know that this is like the third letter. Fourth is the fourth. That I've sent in like two days, but I wanted to get your opinion on something that has been pricking at my brain for a long time now. I like that, pricking at my brain. Uh, with the coming of The Last Jedi, I have remembered that director Ryan Johnson has told us, uh, has told us that the movie, thank you, will start upright where, or up Ew. right where we left off with Ray presenting <laughs> Luke with the famous lightsaber. Did you guys fart? Yes. Gross. <laughs> Gus is our really dog. really bad. It, it smells like skunk. It does. He stinks. Sometimes. sometimes it's like. And he like he did one of those. He goes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, <laughs> like that was eight percent of the the energy he's outlaid today. Oh my god! <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> All right, Gus is interfering in this email here. Uh, Ryan Johnson has told us that the movie will start up right where we left off with Ray presenting Luke with the famous lightsaber. If that is so, <laughs> will the movie have the opening scrawl like all the other movies? If it does, will it just sum up The Force Awakens? Or will it just start up with a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away? And then just start up like it did in Rogue One? Let me know what you guys think on this. Thanks to Tony. May the Force be with you. I think they'll definitely have a scroll. Oh, it'll definitely have a... It's gotta have a scroll. It will. It will. I mean, because it's one of the Star Wars, like, episodes, it has to have it. Or else, I think people would quit Star Wars. Yeah. And it... Like, even the one for The Force Awakens had almost nothing in it, even though it had one. It just said, Luke Skywalker's lost. I bet they... I bet they, There's a First Order. There's a Resistance. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they do something Movie. really similar, but I bet they, they talk more about the galaxy at large. Right. As opposed to specifically what's happening with Rey. Right. Well, Since there'll be no a blurb about Rey. There'll be something about Kylo recovering from his wounds. Something about Rey training and something about the Resistance. What about Finn? Recovering from his wounds. It'll it'll probably be like I don't young think hero Finn. I don't think they'll talk about Finn. I think I'm, they'll. I'm, I'm, I think I'm they're laying, gonna hit I'm laying bets the, down. the three main characters. I bet they don't mention Finn, Finn. Kylo, and Ray. I bet they don't mention Finn. How much? What are we betting? Uh, what's on the table? I don't know. Ooh, he's stretching it out. He's he's ready. I gotta think about what I can take from you. Oh, you can take from me. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I just noticed that you have an unopened box of Lego right there. I do. I still have. It's unbelievable. Was that the one I got you for your birthday? Or Christmas? No. The birthday one still isn't finished. Mm. It's yeah, just it's just somewhere else in yeah. half-assembled You know what? State. I had to paint my pergola. 
Did I already yeah. announce that on the yeah, podcast? Yeah, we talked about it last week. <laughs> I, pay, I I stained my garden box yesterday. Mm-hmm. That took you like 40 minutes. It was really easy. <laughs> I should have done it uh, like three years ago when I built it. It would I, look way nicer. Yeah. That was stupid. Yeah. It does look, it idiot. Does, it does look really good. All right. I'm excited about this letter. Who is it? This is from Joel Chapman. Holy cow, I just realized how long his email was. It's super long. I think you should probably wait. What? That's a really long one. Joel, you finally emailed in. All right, then do it. Do you, Are we going to end the podcast? It has been an hour. It's up to you. Well, you could read Drew Wackerlin's. This is really short. They're, we're trying to do them in order for yeah, a reason. It, yeah, it is much easier if they're in order. Okay. Gosh, there's so much good feedback this week. Everybody's emails was like, they were super good. All right, we'll call it. We'll call it. Let's do... You just said let's do them in order. I did. Are you going to read I thought Joel's? there was one that we skipped over. Which What day was Joel's? The 31st. Okay. Yeah, we got two days worth of... Not even two days worth of emails out. Well, let's do one more email. Well, then we do Joel's. That's what I'm saying. Let's... <sighs> okay. Gosh. Good Lord. All right, here we go. Greetings, SWNU crew, Nerd11 reporting in. Sorry I've been AWOL. Lately, Darth Real Life has kept me AFK. Uh, There, I filled my USA RMPC requirement for acronyms and a communication. Uh, I have been waiting with bated breath for your return, and then I got unprepared to submit feedback, so I have some catching up to do. I apologize for the... Then I got caught unprepared to submit feedback. I just like do you, you, you want to read the, do you want to read the letter? No, you just skipped a word. I didn't want people to be confused. I apologize <clears throat> for the disjointed thoughts being expressed in this email as I am typing it on the side between writing procedures, Tim reading the email incorrectly, and mm-hmm. reviewing reports at work. Uh, first off, the thing that is getting my dander up, I don't even know what that means. He says, yes, the idiom is dander, not gander. A gander is a male goose. <laughs> no, isn't a gander a, gander, uh, a, fl- a, a group of geese? Yeah. A goose and a gander. A, a gander is a group of geese. I thought a gander was a male goose. I think uh, it's a group. Too. I'm, I'm going to find All out. I know going. is he used his idiom uh, quote unquote correctly, but we're starting something new here. We're taking it back, and I don't appreciate you pointing out that, Joel. It's the only time I've ever been been disappointed with you. Uh, what has my dander up is everyone calling the symbol of the Jedi Order as it appears in the last Jedi teaser trailer, the Grey Jedi Emblem. As the Tosh pointed out, Grey Jedi is currently a non-canonical designation as tweeted by Pablo Hidalgo on February 5th, 2017. Gander is a male goose. I told you. So did Joel. I know. So he was right about one part of that. <laughs> uh, there really is no such thing as gray Jedi in our stories. In a StarWars.com article, five symbols in the Star Wars universe, and he even cited the source yeah. with some links. He's got dates in here. If only he'd done Inline this. Inline citation, too. If only he had done something, if only he'd done his research correctly on the, the idiom of getting his gander up. Uh, <laughs> lost my place. No, just don't worry. Don't worry, Tim's just being stupid. <laughs> no, it's just he said it three times and you still haven't understood it. I understand. No, it is pointed I don't out that the Jedi I don't know that's what's wrong. He's saying it tongue in cheek. It is, no, he's not. Yes, he. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Mason knows me better than you. Good. And the parent, <laughs> I bet the internet does too. So you think it really is dander up? He's acknowledging. I absolutely know that, that it's dander up. <laughs> I've always known that it was dander up. I misspoke the one time, and then I went with now it. Now we're all stuck with that saying? Yes, we are. <laughs> That's part of living with me, babe cakes. All right. <sighs> it is pointed out in this article, uh, the Jedi Order was all about peace until the Clone Wars, the way few Jedi survived Order 66 and the purge nah, that followed. The Order as it was in the days of the Galactic Republic, Galactic Republic is no more. Their symbol of wings and what looks like a shining light represents their role and beliefs. 
I also fell for, and then he sent in uh, the image from the trailer, Last Jedi trailer, and the uh, like a icon of the symbol of the wings with the star and the the razzmatazz. What? That was on the. How did that get from there to there? Is that your gun? Yeah. She, it was on top it of the It was on my thing. Were you playing with this cup? Why are you looking at me? It's stuck in the carpet. How did it get there? You just pulled it up like it was nothing. I pulled it out of the carpet. It's still stuck in the carpet. I'll, I'll get it out. I still want to know how it got there. It was on top of the Nalgene earlier. Yeah. I have no idea how it got across the room. <laughs> A magic trick occurred. <sighs> While I, we were recording this. I also fell prey to Tim's hidden audio. I'm really sorry about that, guys. I am not a very good podcast producer. <laughs> I am not going to lie about it. I'm fairly careless. <sighs> and uh, there was no hidden audio. There was. There was a snippet of audio at the end of the podcast. But it was just that, the Wookiee roar. <laughs> and that's what made it yeah. expand. <laughs> I didn't leave the recording on by accident, as Joel suggests. Uh, I listened intently, hoping to hear Jen do a solo bit about all the things that she was correct about, that Tim and Mason were wrong. But alas, it was nothing but dead air, only to be later or revealed later that Tim just forgot to push the stop button. It's not even that. Yeah, that's yeah, clarify. I forgot to... It is a formatting error of GarageBand. Yes, correct. <sighs> I wish Jenny would do a solo podcast rant. I think that would be amusing. Uh, you should when we're gone on our adventure. Oh, you should. While we're on the canoe trip. Uh, here we go. Uh, it was sad to hear that you had a bad experience at SWCO. Uh, by all other counts, it sounded like a great event, almost as exciting as Star SWCA in 2015. I feel that Lucasfilm and Disney are moving to only have celebration in years that ha- that the saga episodic films are released you think that this is the case, and what will happen if they have a take a break between episodes nine and ten? I do not think that's what it is. I think they really want to get back on the schedule of having movies in the the early late spring, early summer, and so they're trying to do that. I yeah, I don't. I think it was just a fluke this year. They make way too much money on these conventions to not continue to do them. Uh, Speaking of episode 9, do you think that Lucasfilm, Disney are going to stick with the currently scheduled May release date in 2019, or will it be pushed back to December like they did with Rogue One? What about the yet-to-be-named Han Solo film? Will this still be released five months after episode 8? All right, we're getting into a couple more questions here, so let's comment on May 2019. I have no reason to believe other than, yes, they'll, they'll get back on the May cadence. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, didn't they do that with, they did that with like episode three and with episode six, didn't they? I thought they released the other ones in a different, completely different month. I don't recall them being different months, but I, they could have been. I'm pretty sure they were. I, I'm, I'm holding solid. Um, I, the other, like at some point Avatar will get made and... Avatar keeps getting slated in December releases and they don't want to go up against Avatar. Why? Because it's the highest grossing film ever. They will crush Avatar. Avatar is the highest grossing film ever. If you put Star Wars up against Avatar, <laughs> Star Wars will crush. I don't Star Avatar. Wars every Star Wars film is already up against Avatar right. and Avatar already won. I don't like your attitude. Jay. It's <laughs> That's just a, a, it's a fact. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> it's me. You and can the call li- it a fluke. But me, me, and the listeners versus you guys. It's not. It's reality. Whatever. If you're gonna go play in the Gus Macker, would you rather play against a team of six foot four college basketball players, or against a bunch of fat dudes who are five foot tall and have one leg? What does that have to do with anything? Uh, that is a good analogy for me. Avatar is the six foot four <laughs> college player. Baywatch is the hobbled fat guy. You would want you want to put your movie out when there's no competition because you'll make more money because you're not fighting with everyone's movie dollars. That was a good analogy. Way to bring basketball into it. You're welcome. Uh, Han Solo will not be delayed. No way. I don't know. I we have no reason to believe 
we we've come to find out why Rogue One got delayed because they had to get somebody to actually write music for it and they had to reshoot a bunch. So there's some nobody knows why eight got delayed. Like it's already done, basically. They could have released it on time, is my guess. Hmm. Uh, Joel continues, it depends what day of the week you ask me, just like the question, who is Snoke? I might say, yeah, they're going to move it, Snoke is Plagueis, or no way, they said May, they mean May, slash Snoke is Snoke. Snoke is just Snoke. I think you have those backwards. Not you. I think Joel has them backwards. What? No, he's He's, saying Snoke is... He's insinuating that Snoke is Plagueis, because he thinks they're going to move it. No. No. He thinks they're he he's going back and forth and he's grouping them together in the logical way. He like the crazy way. I think the crazy way is to assume that what they say is what they say because they historic in the last two movies they've moved. I've noted that during the first few rebel synopses, Tim's enthusiasm for the The show has past few. Not first few. You know what? You can read this. (laughs) All right. Do you want me to finish? Go ahead. (laughs) <laughs> I've noted that during the past few Rebel synopses, Tim's enthusiasm for the show has waned. I especially noticed the fall off after the mid-season break. Is this really how Tim feels towards the show in general, or is binging the show burning him out? We're not... I'm just sick of podcasting about it. I want to talk about something else, is the reality of it. I know we have to get through it, and we're so close that we might as well finish it, but like... He's being really grumpy pants about everything. I, it has I, nothing to do with Rebels. She's right. I have been grumpy <laughs> pants about a lot of stuff. I'm having trouble getting excited about things that I'd normally get excited about. <sighs> At least you don't have a bun weighing you down anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you All got that, that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Tim, in my experience, you and Jen have the unique relationship, not Mason. My wife doesn't understand my... You skipped over a paragraph. Oh. Miss. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Wow, you're doing a great job. <laughs> as far as phone, at least I'm not reading incorrect words. No, you're just skipping entire thoughts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as far as phone cases go, I have an OtterBox on my Galaxy S7 Edge, not because I am a mongoloid, but, because, oh, but I am surrounded by a ton of accident-prone individuals. Honestly, if it was street legal, I would drive a vehicle that resembled a life-size bumper car. I don't trust anyone. Mm. Tim, in my experience, you and Jen have the unique relationship, not Mason. My wife doesn't understand my fanaticism. Oh my gosh. Do you want me to take back over? (laughs) No, fanaticism with Star Wars comic books and gaming. Like Mason, I explain to her what I'm going to do and invite her to come along, but no, she will not enjoy them. So anytime that a new Star Wars or superhero movie comes out, my wife will not come with me, and I watch the movie by myself. But she realizes that I am passionate about my fandom and supports me fostering these same fandoms with our children, as long as they are having fun. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Why? He has has to go to all the movies by himself. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Oh, he lived by us. He come with us. You could. Yeah. Speaking of children, let me formally congratulate both Tim and Jen on their future bundle of joy. December is a good month for kids, as my son, two sisters. <laughs> our episode was too long, so uh-uh. yeah, this this would be. It's longer than our last episode. Yep. Sorry, guys. I guess if I you have can to hear, stop. they can barely hear it. Okay. They can't hear it. They can hear it a little. It's just disruptive. Okay. Um, my son, two sisters, my father-in-law, and sister-in-law all have December birthdays. That's a lot of gifts in the month of December yeah. for that family. Christmas and t- all those birthdays. Yeah. Um, might I suggest that you name your new son Temin, as this seems like a nice blending of both of your names. Tim plus Jen equals Temin. Yes. <laughs> Do you know why Temin's relevant? <laughs> it sounds familiar. It's it's Snap Wexley's real I, name. I don't oh, think yeah. I that is a really cool idea. Ugh. That's my collective groan. But seriously, if you are looking for a strong old fashioned name, perhaps Theodore, his nickname could be Ted. Or is that even... why you asked me about that? Yes. Thing? 
Why did you think I was asking you about that? Because anymore? I thought you watched chipmunks or something and you were... <laughs> no, but that was your reason. You said, no, that's a chipmunk. <laughs> I is. said, what about Simon? <laughs> um, his name, his nickname could be Ted or even Teddy. That's cute. <laughs> also, both of my kids have two middle names, which is an old German tradition on my side of the family. My mother and grandmother didn't support this as my father, my siblings, and I all have one middle name. However, my wife liked the idea, so we gave each of our children one middle name, the same as her parents, and biblical middle name. So yes, we were those parents. Not to mention that their full names are both 30 characters long. Not wow. including spaces. Yeah. How long is my full name? Um... Well, I think I have rambled on long enough. I guess I need to keep more up to date with my feedback in the future. Nerd11 signing out. Joel, Muster Guy, Shetman, P.S. I asked my boss's Alexa to play a Star Wars podcast, and it is always yes. Star Wars Nerd Unite. Yeah. Woo! That's awesome. That is awesome. That was a long email. I'm really glad he emailed back in. I missed Joel. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't picked a name yet. The Temin one's pretty funny, though. That is a really funny Don't suggestion. you guys hate Snaps? Yeah, he's the worst. I don't hate him. He hates him. <laughs> he's annoying. I acknowledge he is annoying. Yeah. It's a cool name. I mean, if it wasn't for Snaps Wexley... Snaps I is a cool name or Temin? Temin. You have pretty Ooh. weak Snap. All right. Oh, that's, that's a lot. That's that hurts my fingers you're, just listening to You're blowing to out my levelator right now. All right, that's it. We're out of here. So this is going to go up tomorrow on Tuesday. We're sticking to our schedule. Yep. Our schedule. Recorded tonight. And we're going to record on Friday. Why are we recording on Friday? Because I'm busy on Saturday and Why would Sunday. we record on Saturday or Sunday? The to Monday. get caught up on yeah, Rebels. I I want to get two more on this weekend, and then Monday we'll be done with Rebels. We should do a break on Rebels. Can we do Anakin and Obi-Wan? Oh, Obi jeez. The thing is, is we're... We only have three episodes it's left. It's really only two, and they're awesome. All right, fine. Why would we do a break All right, now? Fine. We'll finish Rebels, and then we'll go <laughs> back to like comics. We're finale. This is going to be the summer of comics. I'm just calling it right now. I already said comics, that. Comics, wall to wall. And we're going to do them in blocks, right? Yeah, we're doing the, like, trades, like the story arcs. <laughs> So the Anakin and Obi-Wan comic is a whole block. And then there's the Han Solo book. That was one whole series. So The Poe one might be done with their first trade. The Poe Star one is, Wars is done with a trade. Done. Poe Darth one is like on ep issue 17 or something already. Star Wars and Darth Vader both have had multiple trades that we haven't covered. Yeah, I know. A new Darth Vader is so exists. I know. next Monday we could Dr. be done with Afra. Rebels and start doing comics. Okay. All right, I like that idea. I also like the idea of you getting that gum out of my carpet. We're <laughs> everywhere on the internet. There's not gum in the carpet. It's there fine. absolutely is gum in my carpet. It's fine. In the Nerds Unite recording studios. StarWarsNerdsUnite.com. Follow us there. Uh, Benview Network. I told you guys last week there is a new podcast starting up. Minute by Minute, Super Mario Brothers. Go to BenviewNetwork.com. Check that out. Uh, Retro Junkies Network, great podcast called Two Dudes and a Ness. We talk about Nintendo games, retro gaming. So I started listening to a podcast this like two days ago. Uh-oh. That I think people should listen to. I don't think we should recommend podcasts unless we, two of us agree on it. This one. Stuff You Should Know. Is that yeah. like Science Corner? It's less about science and more about just random stuff. I read. I I used to listen to the history one. What's that Hardcore one? Hardcore history? No, it was like stuff you missed in history class oh, or something I don't like know. that. Stuff you should know. It's funny. It's two dudes that have really dry humor. Talk about weird things in depth. Jenny loves dry humor. The one I'm listening to right now is about TV I dinners. Have, I what I don't like is when gelatin. people call their humor dry when the, really they have no humor. She's talking about like, me. I have a dry sense of humor. You should listen to one of these and, and tell me if you I think like they all have kinds dry of humor, humor or not. Because they're only like 15 minutes long. Yeah, they okay. are short. I, remember, I think I have listened to that podcast before. Sounds good. 
and they give us the world good information. It's not good info. It's not useful whatsoever. Oh, really? It's just funny and interesting. Mm. It's like trivial knowledge. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, what did I not plug? Everyone, Amazon you know, link. Oh yeah, Amazon link off StarWarsUnite.com. Buy stuff there. Uh, we got a Patreon. We got a new subscriber to the Patreon. Ooh, it was Joel. It was Joel Shepman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's. We got to send him stickers, don't we? If it was over the uh, appropriate amount, did he order kombucha? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> did he order kombucha? Oh, I think that's it. Rebels Block is almost over. Hashtag Re- Rebels Block. And then we're going to move on to the summer of comics. This is Star Wars News Unite. I finished. Signing out. I guess I didn't say. What did you finish? Tarkin? No, the, the snow speeder Lego. Oh, yeah. You should post pictures of that on Facebook. Yeah, I need to take some. You that aren't, don't include Joe. Why? Oh, you don't want to put pictures of him on the internet? Yeah, I already do. Oh, Joel sent his pictures on Twitter. He oh, they got the stickers it. and he sent pictures of, you, of his kids. It was cute. Oh, did he? Uh, I only saw the... Adam Strange did that. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Are That's you... the second time I've mixed them up. <laughs> till daddy yeah that, that was till daddy uh, you know i didn't mix them up until we went till daddy and as soon as till daddy came into it it just it warped my brain i'm sorry guys i know your differences <clears throat> i haven't been on twitter in probably like a month yeah it was a cute picture a few people sent well icy spidey put a picture on facebook yeah. of his stickers yeah people like the stickers they're yeah. really good they're good they're Jesus. super nice yeah they are jesus is amazing and moo Oh, Jesus got a tattoo, a new tattoo. Send oh, me a really? picture of, of it. What? Boba Fett. Oh. It's like a portrait. It looks pretty sweet. He got a new job, too. Did he? Yeah. We talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you okay. talk about? The, we don't I know. Didn't, I, yeah, I didn't hear that he actually no, like, got um, it. No, saw, I saw somebody, like, at a, somebody was posting about him, like, a farewell party at work or something, like, about how much he'll be missed you or something. snooping on him? It came up on my feed because he's tagged. It was on Instagram or Facebook about mm. a going away party for him. Yeah, I missed it, I guess. Good for him. I didn't have to do any digging. It was, was literally right in my he face. He was stressed at his job. I'm glad he found something else. Oh, man. There's so yeah. many things to digest on this this refrigerator. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the kids are both wearing um, teenage. Turtles. Yeah. Mutant Job age. has the same uh, PJs. But these aren't PJs. These are just like hooded T-shirts. And they cover your head and they have the, it makes your head look the, like a turtle. Like a bandana. Yeah, like a Ninja Turtle bandana thing. Yeah, they look super cute. I, so I can immediately tell a lot about a person based on their fridge. Yeah. What what can you tell about Adam Strange based on this fridge? Uh, that he doesn't have stainless steel. No. That he has, I mean, you could tell that. That is correct. That he has children. That's not about the fridge. Well, you on. can tell that based on the child pictures on the Or fridge. the children standing in front of the fridge. Yeah. Let me, let me but if you don't this. if the kids were gone, you could see the pictures that I want to know drew. about the fridge. What you mean does the, the fridge, refrigerator? Yeah, nothing t- on the fridge. Right. What does it tell oh. you about the person? Nothing. It tells you everything you need to know. Like, Chaos. Like what? It's a side by side. Yeah? Yeah. That means he's not an idiot. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have a uh, French doors on on our uh, yeah. We should take a picture fridge. of your fridge, and everyone could be like, "Look at those idiots!" What's wrong with our fridge? Yeah, why is that bad? We didn't buy the fridge; it was here when we got it. But but I absolutely would have gotten the same kind of fridge. What's wrong with it? So, whenever you need to get something cold, what do you have to do? Like really cold, like freezing. Put it in your freezer. All right. What do you need to do when you want to get it? You open your open freezer? your freezer. And then do what? Take, pull, pull it out of the How do the you freezer? pull it out? You put your do hand you extend down. extend your arms? Do your arms extend down to the ground? What are you talking about? Uh, so, being you a bend, person who is over. not four feet tall, <laughs> you have to bend over <laughs> to get anything that's on the fridge. And what happens when your small child wants to get a juice? Then they can't get in the fridge. They shouldn't yeah, be yeah, in the kids, fridge anyway. Right. They should. Because if they want a juice and I'm sitting in the other room and he says, Daddy, can I have a juice? I'm like, yeah, knock yourself out, Job. You know why? Because he can open the door. He can reach all the fruit 
and all the things he can drink are on the bottom. You all need to of his start snacks. storing his stuff in the freezer section then. He has his frozen stuff in the freezer <laughs> section. <gasps> I... And then when I need to get something out of the freezer section, you know what I do? I scratch my head and I reach laterally out in front of me and I take it out of the freezer section. So you don't like so you having to bend, to bend to get into the, the freezer. All the way down to it's get... It's ridiculous. What is... there? Okay. The refrigerator is the same you size. You have one layer of penetration on a on a pull-out drawer freezer. Everything else you have to pick up. You got to lift a box out to get down to the stuff that's no, on the bottom. you put it sideways. It's not that hard it's to get ridiculous. into. Okay. If you have a side-by-side... You still have stuff now in your freezer and in your refrigerator that you have to bend bottom. down to get. I don't have to bend down. It's Somebody does. That I consume. It's, you still have the same my amount of space. My child doesn't need to bend down. It's at his level. I don't need my kid to get anything out of the refrigerator. You just wait until you have a two-year-old again. Oh, they won't be allowed to get their own Well, they won't be able food. to. It'll be an effort and futility. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I, I guess we'll, we'll I've got to stop deal painting, with that horrible issue. When I've got to stop painting my palapa to come in to get you <laughs> some grapes, Temin. Oh, man. Instead of just, sure, Temin, grab your grapes. I would like to build a palapa in the background. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, I just need some seed money. Yeah, well. You know, before we lived here, my old house had a... Had a Fridge, it, like our fridge now, has side by side on top. It's French doors. And then French doors, and then the bottom, the whatever drawer, that right. you're making fun of. My old house only had the one on top and one on bottom. Right. So it was the like fridge on the bottom, freezer on the top. <clears throat> yeah, the old school. Kind. That's just as bad. They just swapped the freezer and the fridge. Mm -hmm. It's equally as bad. Um. Yes. I think it was even worse. You can go ahead and say yes. You're right. It's just they flipped it and cut the door in half. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. And they pulled the wool over everyone's <laughs> eyes. These aren't these aren't American fr fridge doors. These are French fridge doors. But I can only I can open just one side of my fridge. I only need to open one side of my fridge to get into my fridge. But it's a way larger amount of uh area that you're opening. So what? You want to get into the thermal dynamics of fridge? Oh my god! <laughs> the air that is escaping your fridge contains so little. I have a thermal question. mass compared to all of the stuff inside of all the right. fridge. <laughs> okay, I have a question, a uh, science question for anyone, oh my anyone gosh. in the universe. Oh no! Who why did we not? This? Why did we not end this podcast yet? Um, no. What is it that causes your ice, not your water, just your ice? Like when you have an automatic ice machine, it just tastes disgusting. Like uh, <laughs> it tastes it, like it has garlic powder. It, in it. it tastes like garlic powder is in your ice, but the water is fine. It's only your ice, and it's because the ice is exposed to air changing, as it freezes. Changing the filter doesn't do anything. It, so it's how, not the water; it's the air in the freezer. I I don't know. Yeah, but how, we've cleaned the freezer yeah. out. There's nothing. There's not garlic in there for sure. No, there's something in the air that is circulating in your house that gets into the freezer, and then it penetrates. But I, but I can, so like the ice thing is in you the left do an side experiment? of the. Right, just let me finish. No, let me let me propose an experiment. You will fill up a cup of water that I can take home. I will freeze it in my freezer, and then we'll, I will bring it back in ice form, and we will taste it. I am positive it'll taste fine. Right, because it is the air. There's something in, in my freezer. freezer. I know it is. I want to know what it is and how to and fix it. And I don't it. know how to fix it. Yeah, I don't that's think it's necessarily in the freezer. I think I it's do. in your house. I don't think so. No, it's so, not. So, in when I do, uh, so the French door is the left side of it. That's where the ice maker is inside the door itself, right? Right. When you open the little latch, this white powdery buildup that smells like garlic powder builds up underneath the spot that drops. It like pulls the air in. That's it's almost like somebody threw a garlic powder bomb into <laughs> and the you inner clean workings it out and of then the. It's like, I can't. I cannot have ice in my house. So that's. I have to have just plain water, plain everything. I've, I've tried baking soda. I tried blowing stuff out. You've highlighted another fatal flaw of the French door fridge, and that is that you have a freezer, a little miniature freezer, in the door of your fridge. Which is absurd. You know what? We you need have to focus. a giant, we need big to focus. freezer on we the need bottom to focus of Focus on the, the ice problem that we've got right yeah, now. Somebody, 
If I anybody would really can tell like us to know. a suggestion on what we could do, because let me let me be clear, our fridge is clean. Like yeah. my wife is a clean freak, and the but the do fridge you is not dirty. It? Yes. Do you use bleach? Is what I'm saying. Or not some hippy dippy. It's a mixture of aloe vera and beaver urine. I strictly use white vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and garlic. Yeah. Well. No. Uh, I haven't like bleached the inside of the refrigerator, but it's, that's I'm telling you that is I made. A step. You know, I, I nuclear made it, option. I made it better. Like if you dump the ice out and you wipe out all that powdery stuff that he comes out. He says it's better. I still always and then, taste no, it. It's disgusting. No. If you. <laughs> If you, we had this ice pack that I took out, and for like a week, the ice tasted fine. And then when the ice sat in there too long again, it started to taste like crap again. If I dump the ice out and wipe everything down, the wa- the ice will taste good. The first for, few batches. Yeah, the first few batches sure. taste good. And then after that, it's garbage. You know what? I have a side-by-side, and my ice tastes like oh, the greatest thing on earth. Oh. I really need to it's figure like out what glacier, it is. It's like a glacier up in the, the Denali National Park. Just flew itself into my freezer. I just need to go to the gas station and get a bag of ice. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Just get a side by side fridge. You can get a super nice, deep, extra deep 36 incher. We, we could. We could get a new fridge. Let's just do it. Side by side. And then you can put the French door out on the, the road and put like a that, communist that, flag on it. No. Do not take freedom ice fridge. Tastes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Free ice. So there you go, Adam Strange. Good work on the side by side. Yeah, that's a science question for anyone. You know how hard it is to buy one. Buy a side by side. Yeah, a high quality thirty six inch deep side by side. No, I nobody have no sells idea. them. I wonder why? why. Because everyone's stupid and buys French door ones. If you go to like a big box store, they have French door, French door, French door, French door, French door. The white crap box with the freezer on top. Like that's the economy option. Hmm. There's no side by sides, or if they have one, it's one of the skinny ones. I don't want a skinny one. The next fridge I buy is going to be a side by side. It's going to be a smart fridge. Don't do that. Get a stupid fridge without an ice maker, side by side. I thought you have an ice maker. They don't sell. The only ones that they sell in the entire world that are side by sides without an ice maker are sold in Europe. It's ridiculous. I tried to import one and it was going to be so expensive. Wait, so you do have an ice maker or not? I do, but I'm telling you, you shouldn't get it. Why? Because they're junk, they break all the time. I thought you were just touting like how amazing. I'm doing it that is. to mock you because my ice does taste wonderful. <sighs> I hate you. All right, we're ending this. That was 20 extra minutes. Okay. May the force be with you. All right. You. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. We're doomed. This podcast is a part of the Benview Network. You can find this and other podcasts like it at BenviewNetwork.com.